Hi everyone, it's Christine from Christine Stampin' Spot. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to my Animal Outing online card class. I want to begin this video by apologizing for the delay. As I stated in my email to you guys, I had a sick kid. I, the back to school germs hit our house in the second week of school. It was crazy and sometimes when my kid gets a cold he gets really bad respiratory infections and he has to be hooked up to a nebulizer so all that was happening last week and so I just got a little bit behind. So thank you guys all so much for your patience and I hope that you love the cards that we create. So we are using the animal outing bundle so the stamp set as well as the coordinating dies and then just one stamp pad for today's class and that's early espresso so let's go ahead and get started are you guys ready to see the first card that we're going to make the first card that we're going to make looks like this it's super simple but super cute so in your packet you want to reach for the little packet that looks like this you find in your packets, and you should be getting them soon if you don't already have them, your packets come in clear envelope sleeves, and you have the supplies in each sleeve for two cards. Now, this class is a little different. Usually both cards are exactly the same, but you'll have one piece that's different for your second card. So for the cards that we're gonna make on camera, you have the little cutouts that I've given you from the designer series paper, and then I'll show you what to do for the second card. It's just a way to use this, these stamp set, this stamp set and these images without having to color if you don't want to. So we're gonna to get to that, and I'll show you what I mean. That'll become more clear when after we finish putting this first card together so anyway this is the packet that you want to go ahead and reach for it has a little giraffe and some fun giraffe paper and that sort of thing so what I did was our dies coordinate with the sheets of the uh, designer series paper that have the little critters on them the dies coordinate perfectly so I was able to cut out a bunch of these really cute little critters for you guys and I thought it was a really fun way to sort of use this coordinating paper pack in, a, in an unusual kind of different way so this card will require very little stamping so let's just go ahead and get started you're going to want to grab you have a little rectangular piece of crumb cake cardstock that looks like this so let's grab that first i'm also going to grab just a little piece of scratch paper and i'm going to grab the wild about you stamp from the stamp set and what i'm going to do is these are red rubber stamps of course so that means that they just stick to the backs of your acrylic blocks you can't see through them. They're red rubber stamps. You don't have to put anything down under your work surface to cushion them. They're already cushioned for you. They stamp beautifully, but you can't see through them. So what I usually do, because I am not the, the straightest stamper, I stamp crooked all the time <laughs> if I can't see through. So I usually tend to just do a little practice first. Just make sure I have the image lined up nicely on my block, and I do. So now this is we're using, like I said, early espresso. So just ink your sentiment stamp up in your early espresso ink, and then you just want to center it right in the center here of this small piece of crumb cake cardstock. So really easy, 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 easy thing to do. And then just lift up. And we have our cute little wild about you sentiment here uh, for our first card. And for this first card, that is all the stamping that we're going to do. Because again, I've provided you with the uh, die cut little giraffe. We can put our scratch paper away and now it's time to put our card together. So what we want to do is um, you'll have a little piece and I accidentally already, I got ahead of myself and before I started, I didn't realize I was, was not filming and so I put this piece on. <laughs> so you'll have a little piece of designer series paper that kind of looks like giraffe spots and you have a little piece in your packet of early espresso uh, cardstock. So go ahead and mount the designer series paper to the cardstock. And then go ahead and just set this aside for a moment. Next, you'll have a piece of crumb cake cardstock that looks like this. And I want to explain how I made this. In your coordinating die set, and this is already pre-cut for you. So to make these cards, you don't have to do this. But if you want to replicate these cards, um, I want you to know, you know how to do them. That's part of why you guys are taking these classes, so you learn. So what you do is you would just take a standard piece of crumb cake cardstock. This one measures three and a half by four and three quarters, because I just kind of wanted a fun little border here. It's going to be mounted onto this dark early espresso cardstock, so you can really see the little 
what look like giraffe spots here. But pretend this is a solid piece of crumb cake cardstock. You simply run it through your Big Shot with this die here from the coordinating die set. So I ran it through my Big Shot and then I took it off and I lined it up right next to where the bottom is and I ran it through again. And that's how I got this design running down the whole left side of this piece of cardstock. A normal sandwich will do for your Big Shot for this die. You don't need to use your precision base. I just use my magnetic base and uh, cutting pad, paper, die, second cutting pad, run it through. Super easy to do and it creates this really fun look. There are several different ways that you could use this die, but I really thought this was fun to just kind of make a little line of this design down one side of the paper. So what you wanna do now is go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of this panel. I'm just gonna grab some regular adhesive and do this side of the panel first, and then I'm just gonna take a little glue pen to get kind of underneath um, and around where the little um, giraffe spots are just so I have adhesive on all sides, but my tape runner was too thick to run, you know, along this side here. So that's why I grabbed my little glue pen. And now I'm just going to center this on my piece of early espresso cardstock, which is cut at, um, let me think, I'm gonna have to measure it. I don't remember, I made these so long ago before I could film this, three and three quarters by five. And when you were emailed the link to this video, by the way, you are also emailed detailed written instructions as well as photographs of the finished cards so you can see where we're going and also supply lists for the supplies for each card that we make. So if I forget to call out measurements or what have you, they are all there in that instruction sheet for you. Okay, so we have this adhered to our early espresso. So now we can see these fun little giraffe spot pattern on the side of the cardstock. We're now going to take our crumb cake card base, which was cut at 11 by four and a quarter and scored at five and a half. Again, all of this is cut for you. I'm just sort of going over what I did in case you'd like to replicate uh, these cards in the future. So go ahead and put some regular adhesive on the back of your little giraffe spot <laughs> panel and then just center this on top of your crumb cake card base. Just see how we, just cutting it a little smaller to give it a different look, gives us a wider border. I just like to change up my card design sometimes, so I didn't do the standard, you know, smaller border this time around. Now you're going to take this little piece of um, designer series paper that you mounted on your early espresso and we're just going to butt this up against the bottom of the top crumb cake panel. So just add some adhesive to the back of it. Like I said, I kind of already did this before I realized I was not on camera. So <laughs> forgive me for that. But just kind of go ahead and, and stick it there. Now what you want to do is take your little sentiment panel that we stamped. And you have a, a rectangular piece of early espresso to mount that crumb cake sentiment panel on top of. So go ahead and just grab your adhesive for that and center your crumb cake sentiment onto that early espresso rectangular piece. So just center that as best you can. And then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to grab some dimensionals just to give my sentiment a little bit of a pop. Know if you've taken any of my classes before or seen any of my YouTube videos, how much I love to pop things. I just love our dimensionals. <laughs> I add them to every order that I make with Stampin' Up, so I always have them and will never run out. <laughs> I'm just going to center this now in the bottom left corner of our little card front here. So there's our cute little uh, sentiment panel. Now, uh, you want to bring over your early espresso scallop circle. This is cut with the layering circles uh, framelit dies already pre-cut for you. And also your crumb cake stitched circle, which was cut from our stitched framelit dies, stitched shape framelit dies, and it's already cut for you out of crumb cake cardstock. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So go ahead and put the adhesive on the back of your stitched crumb cake circle, and then center it on top of your early espresso scallop circle. And as you can see, it's just a little bit of the scallop sticking out. I just wanted it very tiny little bit of it sticking out of the back. There is a larger scallop circle if you prefer the, the larger, um, border but i thought this was cute for our purposes today now we're going to take our little giraffe that i have cut out for for you guys using the designer series paper and the coordinating dies i'm going to grab some mini dimensionals and i'm going to stick some on the back of our little giraffe and we're going to give him a pop as well and we are going to pop him right on top of this little circle panel here 
So let's go ahead and peel the backings of our mini dimensionals off. If I can get them off. See, this is when fingernails would be very helpful. I can never keep fingernails. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of put him in the left of center, sort of leaning over to the right a little bit. Now, I've also cut out for you from Shaded Spruce cardstock this little die cut here. And that is, uh, let me show you. Where did I put the dies, you guys? I just, oh, oh my goodness, right here. That is this little die from your coordinating die set. It's just a little branch. And I'm just going to grab my little glue stick here and just kind of put that underneath the little giraffe's mouth. So it kind of looks like he's munching on some leaves. So I'm just gonna grab my scrap paper so I can use my little glue pen and just get this on the back, get some glue on the back of this shaded spruce little leaf panel. And then we'll just stick this underneath our little giraffe, just for a cute little touch. Okay, so that's done. And again, that was shaded spruce cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over now, take some regular dimensionals, I think four should do the trick, and just pop up our little circle here. All right, and now we're just going to put our little giraffe wherever you want really, just right about here is where I'm going to put mine, like so. And then as a finishing touch, you were each given six um, gold metallic pearls, three for each card. And I just put mine, you can put them wherever you want. I just put mine in the upper right corner for just a little added touch, like so. Okay, and that's it guys. That is this cute little card here. I think it is so cute and it is so simple and really saves us time because we didn't have to color. I love to color, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you might not have the time to color. So you can just use that designer series paper and cut the images right out with the coordinating dies. And I love how that works. Now for your second card in the pack, and this is what I was talking about before at the very start of this video. The second card of each card that we make is gonna be a little bit different. So you're only gonna have one die cut from the paper. On your second card, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna take your second. Everything will be exactly the same except this one part. And that's, you're gonna stamp your animal this time instead of having the die cut from the paper. Now, if you have the blends or watercolor, obviously you could stamp on some uh, white cardstock or some watercolor paper and, you know, with your specialty black ink and then go to town coloring, which I love to do. But I wanted to keep this class inexpensive and simple. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to bring over some scratch paper. I'm going to open up my early espresso um, ink pad. I'm going to grab my little giraffe stamp from the stamp set. I'm going to ink it up in the early espresso and then what I'm going to do, I always like to flip it over make sure I have even coverage there and I do. And then I'm just going to stamp him right about where we placed him when we had the die cut. Just like that. And isn't that cute? And then you would go ahead and, you know, do everything else the same with your card. You would put the little leaf sprig down here and then your card would look exactly the same except you'd have this little stamped guy instead of the colored one from the paper. So that's how we're going to do all of our second cards. So everything else will be the same except for that. It's a fun way to show that you don't always have to color images that are uh, outlined like this that look like they are meant for coloring. You can still work with just stamping if you're you know, don't have time to color or just don't want to. I think it's adorable, this image here on this cute little piece of circle uh, panel. So anyway, that's what the card would look like with, of course, another little green leafy sprig right here. That's what your second card is going to look like. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's move on now to our second card. This is was card number one, like I said. So here's the one I made before. Here's the one we just made on camera. Super cute, super, super easy. All right, so let's set that one aside and move on to card number two. Card number two is this cute little guy right here. How adorable is this? So you're going to want to reach for the packet that looks like this. Okay, so it has this little um, sloth from the designer series paper. It's got some lemon lime twist elements that are 
cut for you from the die cuts um, and it's got this fun piece of designer series paper and it's got crumb cake and berry burst and lemon lime twist cardstock colors all right so again minimal stamping on this first card because we have this fun little designer series paper that we're going to use to, to sort of be the star of the show so what you want to do is you want to take your little square of lemon lime twist cardstock and a piece of scrap paper and I thought since the little the little image had a little bird and then the little sloth that the together we make a great pair sentiment would be great for this particular um, you know image for this particular card card design so we're gonna grab that sentiment and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on my clear block and then we're gonna grab that early espresso ink ink pad I should say I'm gonna do a little practice like I like to do just to make sure I have it nice and lined up on my uh, block it looks like I do it looks good and now I'm just gonna go ahead and center it on this panel of lemon lime twist cardstock and there we go very nice I really like the fonts of these sentiments as well I think it's really pretty all right so now what we're gonna do that's all the stamping guys we're gonna put this card together so what I want you to do first is grab your piece of Berry Bliss cardstock and mount your crumb cake right on top. So just take your regular adhesive, put it on the back of your crumb cake, and then go ahead and center that. We can get rid of this scratch paper, by the way, and just go ahead then and center that on top of this Berry Burst cardstock here. All right, and then while we have this piece in our hands, let's go ahead and stick it to the front of our card base, which was cut uh, from Lemon Lime Twist. It's a standard A2 size card base, so it measures 11 inches by four and a quarter, and it is scored at five and a half. I have this larger border again, like we did with card number one, just to change things up a little bit. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is you have this fun strip of designer series paper. It has the little birds on the back. You could really use either side, but I went with the Berry Burst side to kind of coordinate with the cardstock that I chose. So go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of your designer series paper panel. And then maybe about, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so up from the bottom of the crumb cake cardstock, go ahead and adhere that down like so. Okay. Now, the next thing that you have in your little packet is something that looks like this. This is this die here from the coordinating die set. And what I did was I ran it through my Big Shot with the normal standard cutting pad, the magnetic plate, cutting pad, paper, die down, cutting pad. And um, what it does is it doesn't actually cut out the image. So you could have this on your um, paper here. So, and it would be like a, like a frame almost, like you could look through, peer through. Um, what I did though is I went ahead and just cut it on a small strip of lemon lime twist cardstock and then cut around it to cut it out. And I thought it made a fun little element to this card design. And then it has these little tiny leaves that you can pop up. Do you guys see that? How those little leaves there are popped up? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, um, bring my scratch paper back over and just take my glue, my Zig glue pen really quickly here and just add some glue to the back of this. Careful to avoid the little backs of the leaves that you wanna pop out, because otherwise you'll glue them in place and then you won't be able to pop them out. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add this to the top left panel. And again, this is already cut out for you, but I just wanted to explain how I cut it out. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that this, there are lots of ways to use this particular die. You can use it flat on the paper. It doesn't cut out the rectangle is what I'm trying to say. It just cuts out the, 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 the branches. Okay. So you can cut out the rectangle yourself or use it in other creative ways as well. But this is what I chose to do. And then this little piece that is also in your packet just came from this. It was one of the pop outs of this die. And we're going to adhere this to this top right corner. So actually, I shouldn't have put my um, scrap paper away because I'm going to use this zig glue pen again just to get some glue on the back of this. And uh, then I'm going to stick this to the to the top right. I like it when I can get more than just one thing out of the dies. So I kept the little leaves that pop out of this and they make great little accents to your project. 
Okay, so the next step then is go ahead and bring over your berry burst. This is a scallop circle. It's from our layering circles framelit die set. And then I cut the little sloth image from the designer series paper using the stitched circle from our stitch, stitched shapes framelit dies. And we're going to go ahead and adhere this little guy to our scalloped circle. So go ahead and put some regular adhesive on the back of your designer series paper. And then go ahead and center that on your berry burst scallop circle flip this over grab some dimensionals if you want the pop if you don't want the pop you can of course just use regular adhesive and glue it down whatever you prefer I just like that popped look so I'm going to peel off the backings really quickly here from the back of the dimensionals and then we're just going to put this uh, make sure he's hanging down there Oh, about right there. It really doesn't matter. Just somewhere that looks appealing on the front of that card card front there. Finally, you're going to take your little sentiment that we stamped on the Lemon Line Twist cardstock, turn it over. I'm going to grab some dimensionals again. Of course, you can glue it flush if you prefer. And I am going to go ahead and stick this down in the bottom right corner. So I'm just going to kind of have it slightly over the... Um, the designer series paper so it's a little bit taller than the designer series paper and that is card number two i just think it's so sweet and i love using the designer series paper and sometimes making that the focus instead of the stamp for your second card um, you will have a crumb cake stitched circle and what i uh, decided to do for that was just stamp the little kangaroo with the little koala bear in the pouch can you guys see that? So I did that just like I did the first card where we stamped the giraffe on crumb cake with early espresso, except I just stamped the little um, kangaroo with the little um, koala bear because it went with the sentiment. That's why I chose that. So that is what your card will look like. Um, your second card. Does that make sense? So it's just very simple stamping, no coloring, just a quick and easy card to put together with some fun die cut elements sprinkled in. So that will be your second card. And you could really, if you chose a different sentiment, you could use any of the animals. I just wanted one that had two animals in it to, to match with the sentiment. So that's why I stamped the little kangaroo with the little koala buddy there. So super cute and easy. All right, so that is card number two, guys. We are moving right along. This is a super simple card class, but I think a really fun one. So finally, this is our last card design. How cute is this with our little rhino? So I've cut the rhino out for you um, for your first card. So what you want to do is grab the little packet that looks like this. So it's got some gray designer series paper, your rhino cut out. It's got some animal um, designer series paper as well. And so let's go ahead and get this going. So the first thing that we're going to do is you want to grab your stitch square cut from basic gray cardstock. This is from the stitched shapes framelit dies. And then you have a scallop square from Melon Mambo cardstock that is from the layering squares framelit dies. And these are already cut for you pre-cut. You want to go ahead and flip your stitch square over, put some adhesive on the back and then go ahead and adhere this to the center of your scallop square. So just center it on top of that scallop square. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rhino that I have cut for you from the designer series paper, flip them over, grab some dimensionals, and then we are just going to adhere him with a little bit of a pop. I'm gonna grab some mini dimensionals as well so I can get underneath the little bird up here. So he sort of um, has uh, equal dimensionals around so he's not flipping to one side or the other. Then we'll go ahead and take the backings off. Okay, and then we just wanna center this little guy right on top of this um, basic gray stitched square. So we'll just go ahead and, oops, excuse me, I dropped him. Sorry about that guys, my head gets in the frame. I apologize, I dropped him. <laughs> All right, so we'll just center him right in the middle of this square panel, like so. Okay, so that part is done. The next thing you wanna do is you have a little tiny rectangle of basic gray cardstock. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab that piece, it's just teeny tiny, and you're going to grab your stamp set 
and you're going to use the thank you big time sentiment and your early espresso ink pad and just stamp that right in the center to save some time so this class wasn't super long i went ahead and already stamped it so as you can see there it says thank you big time and i love the early espresso ink actually on top of the basic gray i think that's really pretty okay the next thing you want to do is grab your thick whisper white card base which is cut the same as the others. It's 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. And then bring over your gray designer series paper. It has the hippos on the back. And add some adhesive to the back of this. This was cut at four by five and a quarter. So we're going back to the little small border card design for this card. I'm gonna center this on top of the Thick Whisper White card base and just glue it down like so. Okay. And now what you want to do is you have a cute little uh, designer series paper um, panel here and some Melon Mambo to mount behind it. So go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of your designer series panel. Center that in the middle of the Melon Mambo and then put more adhesive on the back of the Melon Mambo. And then go ahead and maybe about maybe an eighth of an inch from the bottom up, go ahead and um, stick that down. Okay, like so. And then you're just gonna take your little Rhino panel, flip it over, grab some dimensionals. Four should, five, I guess five should do it. Okay, peel off the backings. Okay, and then you'll just center this above here, like so. And then you're just gonna take your thank you big time sentiment, flip that over, grab two dimensionals, take the backings off, and then just go ahead and stick that about right there. And there you have it, guys. There is card number three. Super, super easy, super, super cute. For the second card, you're gonna do what I've showed you for um, all the others, and you're just gonna stamp your little Rhino and early espresso ink on your basic gray square. So that card will look like this. Really cute, I think. I just thought it was not a neat way to kind of change it up, use the stamp set in a different way than maybe it looks like it was intended for, just to show you can get lots of use out of this stamp set, as well as the designer series paper and the dies that lets you cut these images right out. I think it's awesome. So that's it, guys. That is the super simple card class. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I had a lot of you sign up for this one, and I really hope that you are not disappointed and that you love these little cards that we made. I think they're super cute, super fun, and they are super easy to put together. So I hope that you enjoyed this class and I will catch you in the next one. Don't forget every Tuesday, I post a new online card class on my blog and I have a Halloween class open right now for registration if you're interested. Thanks guys. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email. I'm here to help. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.